Last time we talked about conformal mappings, which in short is a mapping of a region of the complex plane to another region that preserves the geometry on that region locally. If you want a slightly more detailed explanation of these mappings, you can check out the previous video here. So now that we know what conformal mappings are, what can we conformally map different regions of the complex plane to? Well, for any simply connected region, there is a complete answer. That is, you can conformally map that region to any other simply connected region. Simply connected for us just means that you can take a path in the space to go from one point in the space to any other point in the space. And there's a bit of freedom to how you choose that path. So this is simply connected and this is not. You could spend an entire course in complex analysis building up to the proof of this statement about things that we can conformally map between. So we're actually going to avoid it for this video, but I wanted to talk about some special examples of this phenomenon. They're called schwarz christoffel mappings. A schwarz christoffel mapping, okay, that's a mouthful, but moving on, takes the upper half of the complex plane or all of the complex numbers with non-negative imaginary parts and maps them to polygons. The math here gets incredibly hairy incredibly fast, and that seems reasonable. The mapping is conformal after all, so it needs to encode all of the local geometric information from the upper half plane, which is an infinite region, into some polygon, which is a bounded region, as well as utilize the information given by that polygon, like where you want the vertices to go. In general, here is the equation for a schwarz christoffel map for a region with a finite number of vertices. These ABC terms are values on the real axis that correspond to the vertices of the polygon, and the alpha, beta, gamma are all interior angles at these vertices in radians, and big C is just a constant. So for example, if we wanted an equilateral triangle, we could have the mapping from the upper half plane to the complex numbers given by this expression. Now we said earlier that we can conformally map any simply connected region to any other simply connected region. But if the equation for a plain old equilateral triangle is that ugly, do we even know the formula for simply connected regions, like those that are enclosed by a fractal boundary? A paper by Gonzalo Riera specifically investigates this phenomenon for the Koch snowflake, and this paper was the inspiration for this video. So let's briefly talk about how you construct the Koch snowflake. Without going into too much detail, the Koch snowflake is formed by taking an equilateral triangle and then continually branching out from that triangle with smaller equilateral triangles. Here are the first three iterations of this construction. In particular, the Koch snowflake is the result of an infinite process, so the way we constructed schwarz christoffel maps before isn't necessarily going to make sense because of the infiniteness of the Koch snowflake when viewed as some sort of divergent polygon. Instead of mapping from the upper half plane, we will form these maps by using the interior of the unit circle as our domain. Again, the mathematics gets incredibly hairy, but here are the equations for the first three iterations of the Koch snowflake construction. They may not look like it, but they are actually kind of similar to how we constructed the general map between the upper half plane and a polygon. And that makes sense because the first three iterations of the Koch construction are polygons with a finite number of vertices. I've condensed the mappings a little bit so they're more reasonable to write down here, and there is a pattern to these mappings. So if you want to go ahead and try to figure out what the mapping to the fourth iteration would look like, it's a mess but it's doable. Now would be a good time to stop before we state the mapping for the fully constructed Koch snowflake. I've linked Riera's paper down below if you're interested in the explicit construction of these maps. He also gives the derivation for the map to the whole Koch snowflake as it appears here. The paper also does a good job at illustrating these different maps as well, which makes some really cool graphics like this one. So I definitely recommend that you take a look. Uh, Rear's paper is actually an extension of the original theory behind schwarz christoffel maps. As he mentions in his conclusion, quote, we have shown that the formula can be extended to a variety of shapes with an infinite number of vertices. It would be very interesting in the future to find exactly the branch points necessary in Koch snowflake as well as in specific slitted regions." End quote. In particular, we don't know much about conformal mappings to regions with 
these segments cut out, for instance, which happens to be an important mapping to another more theoretical field of mathematics. If you'd like to think about this more or see some of these constructions in more detail, Riera spends a bit of time on these questions in his paper as well. Anyhow, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe for more mathematics videos. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chuck, and I will see you next time. Now where is Riera's paper? Because I think there is a typo in his conclusion. Do, 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 do. Oh, yep, he calls it in Coke Snowflake. That's weird. Anyway, grammar. Okay, alrighty, I'm out. <laughs>